Dabro Bajalovitz, welcome. On behalf of the Charlotte Sister Cities Board of Directors, we are so pleased you could join us for this evening's celebration of Charlotte's 30 year partnership with the city of Voronezh, Russia. This is the fifth in a monthly virtual forum series, each featuring one of Charlotte's seven sister cities. As we get started, I would like to pay special welcome to students who are joining us from the following schools that have registered. Carmel Middle School, Charlotte Christian, Charlotte Latin School, Hickory Grove Christian School, Metrolina Regional Scholars Academy, Myers Park High School, Providence Day School, South Mech High School, Waddell Language Academy, Weddington High School, Charlotte Country Day School, UNC Charlotte, and Davidson College. As we get going, we'd like to first recognize and say spasiba, or thank you, to our community partners. They include the Charlotte International Cabinet, the International House of Charlotte, World Affairs Council of Charlotte, Bridge House Law, Alliance Francaise of Charlotte, the American Council on Germany, the Zeitgeist Foundation, the Charlotte International Rotary Club, Charlotte North Rotary Club, Sumner Packaging, Waddell Language Academy, Charlotte Latin School, Charlotte Country Day School, Davidson College, UNC Charlotte, the Young Professionals of the World Affairs Council, the Young Professionals of International House, and the Great Decisions Lecture Series. To learn more about our community partners, please visit our website at www cltsistercities.org. We'd like to next thank members of our ReFounders Circle. These are members of our community who generously contributed financially to the refounding of Charlotte Sister Cities as we pursue the path of once again becoming a 501c3 nonprofit. We also express our appreciation to our partners at Bridgehouse Law who have provided us with guidance and support as we have pursued nonprofit status. This evening, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to give a shout out to our Charlotte Sister Cities Team Davidson volunteers and interns. You see them here, and they include Alan Morales Loyola, who's a junior who's helping to build our annual finance plan, as well as our upcoming fundraising strategy. Sophie Danish, who's a junior, who is investigating our Sister Cities partnerships, and is also currently researching monuments devoted to Sister City relationships, both in Charlotte and overseas. Hollis Plexico, who's a freshman Bonner Scholar volunteer, who's working with our high school student initiative, as well as helping to build our communication and public relations strategy. And Keelan Bailey, who's a junior, who's helping to organize and lead our upcoming Kumasi Forum, which will take place in May. Special thanks to Professor Jane Zimmerman, director of the Dean Rusk Center for International Studies at Davidson, and who is a member of the Charlotte Sister Cities Board of Directors, who's helped to connect our organization with these volunteers and interns. If there are any students who are watching, university or high school, who are interested in volunteering or interning, please visit our website and let us know of your interest so we can begin the conversation. The city of Voronezh has a long and rich history. Founded in 1585, today it is the administrative capital of the Voronezh Oblast. It is 350 miles south of Moscow, located on the Southeastern Railroad, which links West Russia to the Urals in Siberia. With a population of 1 million, it's the 13th most populated city in Russia. In the late 17th century, Peter the Great had a dock house constructed on the Weronets River, which runs through Voronezh. But today, its economy focuses on farm machinery and construction materials. As you'll see here, this is the document that was signed on June 26, 1991, between Mayor Sue Myrick and the mayor of Voronezh at the time that declared the foundation of a sister city's relation. Over the years, there's been a rich history of exchange of ideas, business, culture that have included medical exchanges, student exchanges, business delegations, the Voronezh Fire Department visited Charlotte nearly a decade ago. The police departments have met to focus on addressing issues related to domestic violence. We are excited this evening to share the story of this partnership and also to begin to imagine the future. 
It is now my honor to introduce our opening speaker this evening, former Congresswoman Sue Myrick. Congresswoman Myrick is a native of Ohio who upon moving to Charlotte became president CEO of Myrick Advertising and Public Relations as well as Myrick Enterprises. She was elected to Charlotte City Council in 1983 and would serve until 1985. In 1987, she was elected as Charlotte's 51st mayor, serving two terms until 1991. And in 1995, she was elected to represent North Carolina's ninth district in the US House of Representatives. She served our community in Washington for 18 years until her retirement in 2013. Throughout her career, she's been a supporter of sister cities, not just Charlotte's sister cities, which she advocated for during her time as mayor, but she also served as a member of the board of directors for Sister Cities International. Congresswoman Myrick, we are honored that you're with us this evening. Welcome. Well, thank you, David. First of all, for having me, and secondly, for doing these forums. It's been a great um, idea and an educational tool for Sister Cities in Charlotte. And I wanna thank you especially for reinvigorating Sister Cities again and um, building the excitement for a group that's wonderful. I have always said, you know, that the only way we really are gonna bring peace in the world is people to people. And Sister Cities is such a good example of that. I was mayor in 1991 when we did the agreement with um, Veronish, and it was a, a, a real dreary day. We were outside the government center, and it started to drizzle, and you know how you are when you're hosting people, and here you are with rain, but the mayor was so gracious, and he said that this was a good sign that the rain was watering and nourishing the relationship which was so true. And the people of Veronese were so warm and really wonderful. And, and we had had some good times together. And so uh, again, this is a, a good thing that you're doing and thank you so much. And yes, you mentioned Peggy West before. She was executive director when I was mayor and she was a tremendous support to me just as I'm sure you are currently to Vi and anybody else in the city that you're interacting with because it is important that um, Sister City stays vital for a lot of reasons, but especially because we establish relationships that never would happen otherwise. I know shortly, um, well, first of all, I think really the thing that happened first was student um, visits from a group of Charlotte students who went to Veronish and then the exchange happened and they came here. But I know shortly after um, the establishment of the agreement, uh, the Soviet Union was breaking up. And there were some serious problems, as you know, um, in what was happening throughout Russia and the different entities within Russia. And uh, Charlotte found out that there was a real need for food and clothing in Veronish at this time. And so everybody gathered together and Sister Cities uh, literally collected 3,000 pounds of clothing to send over there. And as part of uh, sending it over there, DHL donated their services to get it to Russia. And then the city actually went to Moscow and picked it up. So, you know, it was really a cooperative effort. And again, that's what you do through sister cities. It all works very well that way. I know after I actually, uh, my term as mayor expired, I um, went on to serve for many years on the board of Sister Cities International. And Kind of help from the other end with um, you know working on grants and things to keep it visible and and uh, a nourishing uh, and friendly relationship for all the cities that were involved across the country and internationally. So it's been a, it's been a good um, time in looking back to remember the things that did happen during that time. I know Jerry Orr was the airport director. And um, he reached out and actually organized and hosted the Veronese airport director to come to Charlotte because they desperately needed to transform their airport, as you can imagine. And so he spent time here with Jerry, you know, showing him the things that Charlotte had done to become so successful um, with our airport. And uh, it was very encouraging because those are the types of things from business to business that became very successful. I know that um, Sister Cities was able to organize a series of, of um, 
exchanges for business leaders and small business owners in Verona to actually come to Charlotte and spend four weeks at a time um, in the business that related to whatever they were doing and learn not only just technology and updating processes, but also, you know, how to operate the business from a capitalist point of view. And so those were very successful as well. And then the fire department um, actually had uh, exchanges with the Veronese Fire Department on municipal services. Again, an area where they really needed some help. And that was something that became a very successful exchange in helping them to update and, you know, kind of remodel their um, uh, systems and what they needed to do to move into the future. And the police got involved too, because at that time, domestic violence, and I probably still is because it is everywhere, domestic violence was a really big issue there. And um, so they did exchanges based on domestic violence in um, being able to relate some of the methods that were used here that hopefully, you know, would help them over there. And then just the, the people, um, relationships and friendships that evolved over the time with um, the exchanges that happened. And there were many, many throughout the 90s and into the 2000s. And let me just check here a second so I don't forget anybody. I want to be sure that we uh, recognize all the things that went on. Oh, another thing that they were able to do was get interns come here to uh, actually work in sister cities uh, for a period of time. And there were a lot of interns that went back and forth. And one of them actually graduated from Davidson College and was hired by Bank of America, worked here for a while, but then went back to work in Russia. So there were so many things that were good about the relationship. And just thank you for, again, what you're doing to continue to nourish all of these relationships with all the cities that are involved. And I just wish you well and um, much success in, in the uh, future of Sister Cities in Charlotte. And thanks for having me. Thank you, Congressman Myra. With three decades of service to Charlotte sister cities, we are deeply appreciative. As noted by Peggy West, who is the former executive director of Charlotte sister cities, your leadership was instrumental in the growth of Charlotte sister cities and our, the birth of our partnership with Voronish back in the early 1990s. It's now my pleasure uh, to introduce another leader in Charlotte, the director of the Citizen Diplomacy Program at International House, Janelle Coswell. Uh, Janelle, on Monday evening, helped lead along with Nikita Mittal and Alexis Gordon, the International Women's Day event hosted by International House, of which we were proud to sponsor. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you so much, David. Hello and good evening, everyone. It is indeed my great pleasure to introduce the Master of Ceremonies for this evening, Ms. Alexis Gordon is the International Business Manager and Chief of Protocol for the City of Charlotte. But she does oh so much more for the international community here. When I first moved to Charlotte, and I would be going to all of these different uh, international organizational events, Alexis was always a presence that was there. And from the Charlotte Sister Cities Organization to the Charlotte International Cabinet and so, so many more organizations in between. Alexis has made a lasting impact on all of these organizations, institutions, and the international community in Charlotte. I call her my veritable encyclopedia of any and everything international in Charlotte. And so please put your hands together and welcome Alexis Gordon. Oh, Janelle, thank you so much. You're so kind. Um, really, I'm just here to serve our community. Uh, and that means that tonight is MC. My job is just to keep things moving. So go ahead and remember throughout the forum tonight, drop your questions into the question answer box. Make sure you uh, put the person's name you're directing it to, or if it's a general question, you don't have to write anything. Just write in your question uh, throughout the night. And at the end of the panel, we will go ahead and we will use some of those questions uh, for us to get answers. But other than that, I'm just gonna keep things moving and hope that you enjoy our wonderful panel. And right now I'm going to bring up another of our uh, board members, Nikita 
Mattel, and she is going to introduce our first panelist. Good evening, everyone. It's my honor and privilege to introduce B. Kote today. B. Kote is a licensed clinical social worker, marriage, and family therapist. She works with the men who abuse their intimate partners. In 2001, when the domestic violence shelter director had to decline her participation in, a, in the group that would travel to Varanish on a domestic violence exchange, B was selected to be her replacement. The exchange program was part of the grant initiated by the State Department. It was an initiative started by Hillary Clinton when she was the First Lady. B has been living in Charlotte for the last 25 years after growing up in Rockhill, the daughter of a USAF dad and a French mom. Looks like that's why she lived, loved our Limoges Forum. One of the unique things about B is she works exclusively with men who abuse their partners. While doing so, she educates the whole community about the victims, both adults and kids. Uh, she has maintained uh, her contact with the Varunesh host for last five years. Actually, they have become very close friends and they visit each other quite often. She is looking forward to replenish that friendship and continue the friendship with Charlotte's sister cities. So here I welcome B. Kote. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm just, I'm just so excited about this. Um, I was part of an exchange um, and I was the group that came from Charlotte to Veronish um, on a domestic violence exchange in 2001. So this is my 20th anniversary and, and what a great uh, celebration um, it is. Um, the group from Veronish had come the year before and had visited my offices at the time where I ran a, a county funded uh, a program for abusers. And uh, so I was really excited to be chosen to go to uh, Veronish after meeting uh, these folks here. And I was, I was even more excited uh, to know that um, I would be staying with a, a hostess named Aida, uh, who had been here on an exchange uh, the year before. And so Aida and I have remained friends. Um, she was actually the first person to contact me on 9-11. Uh, to express her um, dismay uh, over the events here. And um, that, that stuck with me. Um, she, uh, she has a daughter named Katie and um, I waited 17 years or, or 15 years, but finally Katie came to visit me and stayed with me uh, for six months while she took classes in English and Katie works in in marketing and HR and she's now in St. Petersburg and the following two years later um, Aida came uh, so three years ago Aida came to see me and spent two weeks with me and I don't know um, I, I chose a couple of background pictures here but this one had some people in it from the exchange and and you can't see me but uh, so we were in um, Veronish for a little over two weeks. And it, this was a life defining trip for me. I didn't know what to expect. It was not a holiday like going to Hawaii and, and posting all the beautiful pictures and all of that. It was just so much more impact than that. It was such an incredible learning opportunity. Um, and the people I learned from the most were the Russian women. The Russian women were incredible. So while we had these amazing events um, and every day we were feted like we were these special foreign dignitaries, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the food and the vodka, lots and lots of vodka and wine. You had a choice, vodka or wine. Um, and so there was a lot of that. And there were toast after toast after toast. And, and um, our police chief at the time, uh, Stevens, 
Daryl Stevens was part of this group, as was our, um, our chief judge, our domestic violence judge uh, named Judge Jones, and he has left us now, um, is no longer with us. I spoke to Chief Stevens, though, on LinkedIn just a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'm still friends with a couple of the people from the exchange, but other than myself, Peggy West was the only female on the trip. So it was really interesting. Um, so they had all these events, every single police station, department, facility, prison um, greeted us and had a celebration for us. So every day we were going, 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 going. Um, and there was very little um, infrastructure at the time in Veronish. And I hear things are so much better then, but, um, it's like I took lots of pictures of toilets, okay, and uh, you know even office buildings had the you know the uh, the floor toilets you know where you had to to um, crouch down, um, and so that was really interesting. But a lot of their um, office buildings and structures were destroyed in in the war, and we here knew very little about that. And so there was not much left and they were trying to rebuild a lot of this from scratch. And what I found out is that they didn't have a, a great understanding of domestic violence. They included child abuse um, within their, their definition of domestic violence. And so they did a lot for the kids. There were a lot of orphaned kids and almost each police precinct had its own little orphanage, uh, if you will, where they took care of of these kids who had been um, abandoned for the most part uh, by parents who had uh, struggles with homelessness and, and drinking and that kind of thing. So anyway, my four minutes is up, but I've got so much more still to share. If anybody ever wants to touch base with me, you're welcome to. Um, I would love to talk to you more about my trip and I'm really hoping that this opens up the door for more um, um, visits and exchanges. And uh, Aida is very excited about it too. She still has a domestic violence business in Veronish, though she lives in St. Petersburg now. And so we're really excited about this and I wanted to share that with you as well. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much. B, it was great to see you up here tonight. I, I think that tonight in honor of uh, International Women's Month, by the way, um, I think that we are writing that wrong of you two being the only women on the trip. We have only women except for David on this panel, which I think is quite appropriate. <laughs> so on to our next panelist, uh, we're going to have her introduced by Diane St. John, who is one of our vice presidents today for the Sister Cities nonprofit. Diane? Hi. Thank you, Alexa, for letting me introduce Charlotteans to Dasha Trichu. Dasha is a perfect example of what Charlotte Sister Cities and Sister Cities International are all about. She and her mother, Yulia, moved from Veronish to Charlotte uh, when Dasha was 13. And her mother married a nice Charlotte guy and the whole family became in enthusiastically involved in Charlotte's sister, sister cities. And of course, especially the Veronish committee. And uh, in, in the meantime, Dasha went to school here. She graduated from UNC Chapel Hill she earned her master's degree in healthcare administration from UNC Charlotte and is currently the strategic sourcing manager for Novant Health, which must be a really busy job right now. Dasha is also the chair now of our Veronish committee, I'm happy to report. So if you get inspired to join Charlotte Sister Cities after tonight's forum, you might want to work on the Veronish committee with Dasha. Dasha likes to return to Veronish every chance she gets but we're hoping she continues to live and thrive in Charlotte. Welcome to the panel, Dasha. Thank you so much for that um, very, very kind introduction, Diane. Um, so my name is Dasha Tretu and I was born in Varonish in 1987. Um, my family lived in an apartment complex that you guys hopefully can see on the small little quick presentation um, uh, where everything was kind of very near us and just around the corner. We had a few grocery stores within the walking distance and I walked to school with my friends. Um, I grew up in, in a building um, 
in an apartment building where all my friends actually lived really near me and we would just play outside in the courtyard. There were a lot of little grandmas who would just sit around and watch all of us kids. Um, and make sure that nothing was going on. Um, and my mom could always just call down to me uh, to get me for dinner, or I can always call up to her and say, it's too soon. Um, in the winter, when it, get, it would get really, really cold, so kind of like negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit is what Russians consider to be really, really cold. Um, they would close schools and we actually would just go and play outside because kids are obviously fearless. Um, and then in the summer, uh, my grandparents would go to the dacha and you see in front of you, my grandfather, um, and he actually built his own dacha, which is a summer house. And we would drive there and we would have all kinds of fruits and veggies. Um, and we would eat as much as we could, just picking from the trees. And then my grandmother, if, if it was, um, you know, if, we just had way too much, which usually, usually is what happened. She would pickle it or make jam and uh, we would enjoy it during the winter, uh, during New Year's, which is a giant holiday in Russia. So we would ce celebrate at that time. Um, my childhood was absolutely amazing. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, my um, school, we would, we, we would attend different plays and operas and ballets. Uh, every year, um, we actually have a puppet theater is what you see in front of you. And we also have a circus tent. So we would have different circus uh, events come through to Varonezh all the time. And, and as Diane said, I go to visit all the time as much as possible. Um, the city is changing new attractions, new restaurants, new parks, um, and just continues to amaze me. Thank you so much, Alexis. I'll give it back to you. Thank you so much, Dasha, and for sharing those pictures. It really does help us to kind of see what everyday life is like. We, I really enjoyed that you were able to show those for us. So up next, I am going to meet, I'm going to introduce uh, Alina. Alina is also on our board, and she is going to introduce our next speaker. Thank you so much, Alexis. It's my pleasure to introduce Tatiana Miller. I first got to know Tanya through my work on the steering committee, and I was immediately impressed by how excited she was to revitalize Sister City's programming in Charlotte, and especially to re-engage with our Russian sister city of Varanish. Tanya works in the College of Engineering at UNC Charlotte, which is also her alma mater. She graduated from UNC Charlotte with a minor in Russian, and in her last semester, she received a competitive scholarship to go to Varanish for 10 days with a group of UNCC students. Tanya has been living in Charlotte for the last 11 years. And in addition to her work at UNCC, she is also a Russian conversation coach at the North Carolina Virtual Public School. Tanya, thank you so much for being part of our panel tonight. Thank you, Alina. Thank you for introducing me and thank you for having me. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to share something that I prepared it just a second. And please let me know if everyone can see my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, yes we can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Okay. So I graduated from, um, as Alina said, from UNCC um, Charlotte, from UNC Charlotte with a major in international studies and minor in Russian language. Now, I was fortunate at my last semester of studying um, to be a recipient, a recipient of the uh, Youth for Health Scholarship. Uh, what was that? That entailed a um, participation of a group of medical students from Voronezh, Russia and UNC students and UNCC participants uh, were students that had to take at least one Russian language course. And in order to win that scholarship, all of us had to um, participate in a health related uh, project. So we did. And finally, 10 finalists um, were ready to go to um, on the trip. And before, I'm sorry, having technical difficulties today. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. And uh, before we um, 
went to Voronezh, uh, one of our stops, first stops was, um, sorry, 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 sorry. Apologies. Our first stop was uh, Moscow. So this is all of us, Yulia Baldwin, who was organizer, our teacher and mentor at the time. Um, we spent in Moscow about two days. Um, we visited a lot of museums, galleries, um, Asian Russian restaurants, and uh, students were so excited to walk on the Red Square. That was something like they couldn't believe they're actually doing that. So it's like, okay, check mark, I've been there. So they were very excited about that moment. Um, we had a lot of tea, you know, Russians are very big on tea drinking. Um, and one of the places we also visited was the embassy, U.S. embassy in Moscow. Um, this is our group and they welcomed us and we had a very interesting conversation and kind of like a conference type. Um, so that was amazing. So after two days being in Moscow, it was fully packed. We are off to Voronezh. And Voronezh... Uh, there was something else. For me personally, as far as cultural impact, I am a native Russian. And um, what I can share with you in the next few minutes is that what that trip, what kind of impact that trip had on my um, um, college American uh, fellow travelers. I think that was important to see because everybody else was a Native American. And the question comes up, what this UNCC students actually um, saw in Voronezh uh, or reality of Voronezh that surprised them, surprised them. Um, so I'm telling you in two days, um, Voronezh students and um, UNCC students became inseparable, literally. Uh, so in my observations was that um, issues, um, hobbies, um, personal life, relationships, um, I don't know, future career opportunities, all of that, students from both countries found a common ground. So they realized that this is something that uh, unites them. It's all the same across the globe. And um, students understand, uh, understood each other very, very well. And I personally think that dialogues like that actually um, could strike potentially a good economic um, interest in the future for both countries or both cities. So uh, students, um, Baroni students became uh, welcome, welcomed companions for UNCC students. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that, as I said before, UNCC students had to take at least one Russian language course. So they came to Voronezh and they wanted to practice Russian. Voronezh students studied English. They wanted to practice English. And they were forcing UNCC students to speak English to them, whereas those were forcing to speak Russian. And that continued to the last goodbye. It was amazing because I think that um, it's mutual. It was mutually beneficial for both groups because um, the best way for someone to um, uh, learn a foreign language uh, when it's spoken naturally. So that was um, that was amazing. Um, they corrected each other on pronunciation, and it just it just it was very very interesting to observe. Uh, not to mention uh, the itinerary that was planned for us was amazing. Um, we visited a theater. We visited uh, some traditional uh, folk festival. It was at the time. It was just I mean outstanding dances. Uh, we went to, um, uh, you know, galleries, museums, um, medical university, and of course, lots of food and lots of drinking tea, um, lots of hospitality, friendly people all over uh, Varunish. Um, that was amazing. And the last thing that I wanted to say with all of this, that I wanted to spotlight Yulia Baldwin. I know she is about to join us who organized that trip. So, and ultimately made it all possible um, through her donation of time and her passion about um, and strong desire to unite two cities, Voronezh and Charlotte and two countries, uh, ultimately Russia and America. So you have to realize with people like that, um, um, 
none of the like exchanges could be possible. So um, it takes dedicated people. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you so much. With that, I'm going to have all of our pan pa panelists turn back on their cameras and they can keep their mic open um, so that we can have a conversation with some of these questions that are popping up. Um, one of the questions that I see comes from Jane Zimmerman, and she this one is open to anyone. She says that it is very difficult for Americans and Russians to obtain visas to each other's countries right now partially because of the political situation. And of course there is the pandemic, but how might the Charlotte internet that, sorry, the Charlotte sister cities community program, how might this nonprofit help foster virtual relationships, particularly among the youth of Charlotte and Veronish? What do you guys think? How do you think that would be possible? Well, I have something to say about that. If I may. Um, I think the way it could work, just like any other countries, um, um, if it has something to do with education or even summer camp, even for one week, I think the embassies would be willing to work and um, give more leeway than, you know, just come for people to visit, you know, their families or, you know, just simply traveling because education has been always a priority as far as I know. And I'm speaking for myself because my daughter spent entire fall semester in another country and through pandemic when Americans were not allowed to travel. So, but the visa was given and green light was given no problem because she was going to pursue education in another country. So I think it's going to facilitate um, very, very well, my opinion. Thank you. Either you want to add anything? I, I agree with Tanya. I think, um, we are very fortunate right now um, that the amount of digital connection we have across the pond is, um, you know, options are enormous. So really, even having some of those initial conversations, like, um, you know, university to university, like Tanya's program was based on medical. So, you know, finding those connections for, uh, for, special groups of students or whatever, and just putting them in touch virtually, while not ideal, um, still at least has some ability to foster some of those uh, relationships while we are maybe not quite able to travel yet. Thank you. I would say to, to harness the, um, the power of social media, by maybe not only setting up special groups, but maybe even clubs um, in preparation for exchanges so that people can already know about each other. They can already, you know, gauge each other's interests and that kind of thing. And maybe they can develop their own like online games or, or some kind of, of communication that way. So I, I would recommend uh, social media. Okay, thank you. I have another question. This one comes from one of our CMPD officers. So he has done exchanges in Colombia, um, but now he says he is actually learning Russian and is really excited about this. So, Bay, I thought, you know, this kind of led me to some thoughts since you've been um, on a trip that had government officials. How important are those exchanges and to see how that exchange of knowledge happens? Not just a with our government officials that are going there and their government officials coming here, but also you as an individual and getting to speak to your counterparts. What was that like? Well, uh, and I mentioned it a little bit about the, uh, the, the my relationships with the, the women there were so, so powerful. So what was happening is on the surface, we had all of these meetings with other government officials, with the police departments, all, all of this. But that was very superficial, and we didn't get to know each other um, very well that way. I got to know people by going to women's homes and them um, cooking dinner for us and playing music and drinking tea, uh, by going to a nightclub where, um, you know, the electricity went out because that's what happens, um, you know, and, uh, and so, um, it was the the one-on-one -on -one small group um, 
that worked. I think that's where the magic was, was in the development of these one-on-one -on -one friendship and family style uh, relationships. So, but if not for the, the government involvement, nothing would have happened. But we had to do a lot like around them. And I see that that's what happens in a lot of cultures where where there's a, an, an oppression of, of any you know kind of people is the other people work their way around somehow um, the uh, the system and the status so there were a lot of um, meetings um, you know uh, like unofficial meetings uh, there were a lot of times where we were pulled over by the police um, and my my driver a friend of, of my hostesses you know, knew to um, hand over a certain amount of money. And so, I mean, there, there were situations like that, that if it had been just kept to government and I'd been in a hotel somewhere, I would have never known uh, what life as, a, as a, a citizen of Veronish must be really like. You know, and I think that right there, besides the fact that it sounds like you gained like this amazing extended family from your hostess yes. and her children and family, and it just, that's amazing. But I think it's also that really, that really true piece of life and getting to see life. Um, you know, I, I often have to travel as a government official and it's a very different it is. experience than when I get to travel as a Lexus, you know, incognito. Um, but speaking of taking these trips, uh, Tanya, you talked a lot about what the students experienced, but what did, what was your favorite part of that trip? You know, what did you really like the best out of it? Well, my favorite was, um, uh, and Julia might correct me. Uh, so, uh, we visited the ethnographic museum. It was somewhere at the nature with uh, a lot of artifacts and home uh, cooked meal for all of us. There were a lot of games um, and- it was, it was Tanya, I'm sorry. It was a Cossack, Cossack village. Remember Cossack the Cossack village? Co yeah, the like, like ethnographic museum, something like yes, that. Yes. Uh -huh. So that was my favorite. I think it was, well, I, I, I cannot speak for everyone, but we definitely enjoyed because it was uh, several hours and it took us several hours, like uh, maybe a couple to get there. And it was just nature, it's beautiful surroundings. It was green and the host was very nice and meal was provided and homemade. And um, I mean, you just, the students laughed, we play, played and just, it was just very, very cool. I even felt like I got younger <laughs> because I was not a traditional student. So, but um, that was my favorite part. And another one was, um, seeing for two days the um, uh, traditional folk dance festival. It was amazing. We're talking about kids age five up to 17, 18 different um, age categories that they were competing. It's just, I've never seen dances like that. We're talking about like um, uh, uh, international level of perfection, synchronization, how they uh, costumes. It was just something that just blew my mind um, that um, like, wow. So apparently they had a very, very old club up there, uh, 100 years old or something. And the founder was very passionate about that. So and that tradition um, has been, you know, um, continued since. So that those my my personal two favorites. So. That's awesome. I, it really is great when you're an adult getting to travel with younger folks. They do kind of just infuse you with all this energy. It's so much fun. <laughs> Dasha, this one's for you. It comes from Stacy Hepp. Um, she said, what beautiful photos you shared with us from your personal life. And she wants to know what was the most challenging part of relocation um, coming to Charlotte? I know, loaded question. <laughs> Um, honestly, the most challenging part was um, just my friends and, and not really um, having that support. Um, I, of course, I had my mother, which was absolutely amazing, but um, I moved to United States in uh, 2000. Um, we communicated via letters, written letters, um, and it took three weeks, three well, two months, I won't exaggerate, but it took about two months for, you know, communication to go from, from one, from US to Russia and Russia to US. So um, that was a, a way for me to really uh, 
adapt uh, to uh, U.S. culture and um, help me really um, honestly to to learn the language quickly just because I, I, I didn't have a lot of um, Russian friends here. So um, it was uh, that was pretty difficult. Um, other than that, I feel like um, the, the Russian education really prepared me for the American one because um, I left in seventh grade and I already had a year of um, physics. Uh, I had a year of chemistry, algebra, geometry. So when I got here, it, it, I, was, I was ready for, for all of that. Um, just the English language was a little bit tricky. Instant immersion. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I want, I'm, I'm looking at the time, maybe about 10 more minutes uh, before I pitch it to Yulia for her, her portion. So Joshua will introduce her. But uh, I want to go ahead and see if we can fit in a couple more questions. So one of them is just like, uh, I'll, I'll make this one. It was originally to Dasha, but I think I'd like to hear it from everybody. What was like your most memorable thing that you experienced in Veronish that you think people in Charlotte would get a kick out of? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, definitely the dancers that right. will blow everybody's mind i mean uh even you know new york uh you know best best place in new york i mean that could do it just just like that so i mean it just so dancing dancing and performances what they did yeah for me b dasha uh, we definitely have one of the, you know, one of the really, uh, a really, really good theater uh, just for tourist kind of perspective. Um, but just like B was saying, you know, the everyday life is completely different from what you would think a tour, you know, a tourist experience would be. So, and it's very different if you go to Moscow because Varonish is more of a, uh, a smaller regional city. So um, getting with just a, a regular Varonish family will just change your life because um, they'll treat you like their own um, and you will make a friend for life. I agree. Thank you so much for, for saying what I was going to say, Dasha. I think that's what it that's what it was for me is building those uh, those uh, friendships, those lifelong friendships. There were a lot of wonderful events that went to, I agree, I went to a festival as well. And the quality of the arts there is just incredible. Um, and the dancing, uh, you know, was part of that. And so um, also seeing people making do with so much less, with so much more class. Yeah, it can be. I I, uh, I haven't been to Veronish, but I uh, was very lucky. I, I did take a trip where I happened to be a guest on a Russian um, crewed vessel and on the ship. And I got to be really introduced to some very creative thinking. Like uh, we didn't, uh, the we were trying to chill something for entertainment and uh, uh, for to imbibe, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG, to have a, to have a nice drink. Right, yes. Uh, we ended up throwing the bottle all tied together. They'd made this neat little contraption so we wouldn't lose it over the ship so it would chill in the Arctic waters. Um, <laughs> it was so much fun just to see the ingenuity. And I think like this, this wonderful life uh, that I got to experience from the crew, I, you know, and I, I'm really hearing that from you guys. I mean, Tanya, you talking about how uh, the students found so many commonalities. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Like, just kind of talk about what were some of the things that they said, you know, I mean, I can imagine, you know, boy-girl dramas were probably the same on both sides. <laughs> we had some of that, we had some of that, sure, sure. But it, it was, you know, I mean, I, I didn't listen to all conversations, but it was just like, oh, that's how it is. Oh, that will have the same, you know, you constantly hear those uh, remarks that from both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what we have. But, you know, so. What do you guys think about that? I mean, how far can that go to really help bring our communities together? I mean, we um, one of the questions earlier had alluded to some of the, the difficult political situations that our countries have had. How do these sister city relationships, though, how do they bring our people closer? Well, we have to be open, no matter what's going on out there, you know, 
how is it affecting us? Mm -hmm. If you have your heart to be open to, you know, relationships and you just, you know, want, want, want that friendship and you want to know people, how is political situation can affect you? Yeah. Oh, if I may say, maybe to add, um, no, first of all, I'm so happy to see everybody, Tatiana, Привет, Татьяна, and Alina, and Janelle, and Dasha, and Alexis, and Tanya, Tanchka. Um, I would say, uh, honestly, you know, I have this uh, uh, feeling inside myself that we are moving towards the Cold War again. Mm -hmm. And it's on the both sides, unfortunately. Uh, of course, it's because of the president of Russia, who is there, it seems, forever and will be, and all of his politics. So at this time, I think that people-to-people -people diplomacy is something that really should and will work. When, you know, we're bringing Russians to America, like my dad, Dasha's grandfather said, I will never travel to America. They're all en enemies. <laughs> They're all against us. When he came to America, he changed his mind completely. He said, oh, wow, they're normal, normal people. They're very nice. They're smiling. They're very kind. And he made a few friends. Same happens to Americans when they go to Russia, especially maybe to such as to a smaller city like Voronezh, uh, because it's a, it's, it's a very genuine city. People live there forever. They have already their culture that they develop. They're very kind and nice. Yeah, they may look from outside. They're not smiling like most Russians don't. They may look a little bit harsh, but culture is changing too. So what I think that would, to, to add to Tatiana's uh, words, remember that several students went back on their own money mm -hmm. and, and spent half a year living in Voronezh with their new friends. So something uh, something pulled them back, the new friendships, uh, like in the culture. One of the students, if you uh, remember him, George, uh, he has uh, had a di diabetes. He said, I had no problem in Voronezh because food is different. Mm -hmm. There's so much less sugar, so much less of uh, different uh, chemicals in the food. So he, he had, and he said vodka helped too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I said, can you drink vodka when you have diabetes? And he said, yeah, I cannot drink beer, cannot drink wine, but vodka works just fine. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> I, I think uh, that was that was a great trip and everybody made friends. And, uh, and for the sister cities uh, with Russia, it probably will not be very easy to establish meaningful relationships. I don't know. It's, uh, it, takes, it takes really a great effort. And uh, as uh, several of you mentioned, uh, you have already friends, maybe they should be involved, but maybe to start with the government will be politically correct. If, if you invite a few government officials, no matter how, how you know, stuck up they are, yes, uh, they will then push the wheel. If they come, they establish uh, some kind of connections uh, and uh, will be introduced to Charlotte and, and they probably have money to travel on their own if there is a correct invitation to a certain program, for example. Uh, and and then, then they will push for, uh, I know Tanya mentioned the uh, beautiful dancers and there is there are wonderful choirs and folk choirs. I think, I don't know if it happened already, but I think maybe Tracy will tell me, Tracy, by the way, hi. <laughs> um, but there was a dream to invite a Russian uh, children's uh, dancing group, and they usually come like dancing and choir together to perform maybe in schools in Charlotte or, or something like this. And so it's either through children, then all our hearts will open. We cannot resist uh, children to children relation, or it's the government then the government will open everybody's heart and, and will do their way. But um, that's, what, that's what I personally think. I don't know if uh, I, I have something else to add, but there was a group from Paronish of policemen here, um, policemen and judges. There was a group of firemen, which all 
of them. And then it was like exchange uh, visit and Charlotte policeman went back to Voronezh and firemen's the same, uh, firemen the same. Uh, I just remember one interesting uh, episode, uh, which is which I thought was funny and uh, reflects Russian culture, uh, authori authoritative culture a lot. One of the policemen uh, from Voronezh, a big chief, was hosted by just a regular uh, CMPD guy who lived in Concord. <laughs> and in the morning, they had to, 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 to make it to downtown, to sister cities for meetings and everything by 8 a.m. And the police, American police guy will wake him up early and say, we need, it's a long drive, we need 40 minutes or an hour to get there. And, and he would be in a police car. Uh, and usually from Concord to Charlotte, uh, there, is, there are traffic jams in the morning. And Russian police guy was uh, shouting, turn on your siren, damn it, and we'll make it, and we'll make it. Why do you drive like everybody else? You are a police. That's right. We and have an American police, you remember that? Yes. Yes, uh, we and never the, stopped for a red light. Uh, the only time we ever stopped was when an old couple was killed oh, uh, oh. by a car next to us. That's the only time we ever stopped. They all yeah. had drivers because they all drank all day. Yeah. Uh, and so they had drivers who were sober drivers. And yeah, we never stopped for anything. Um, and to, to add on to that, so um, our police, uh, I was with all police officers and a judge as well. Um, and Yuli, you were part of the group, uh, you were part of the team that helped prepare yeah. us for the trip. Um, our, um, our officers were gifted with two 19 year old shop girls. Wow. Yes, yeah. And the breakfast would be, if you remember, the breakfast would start with the uh, uh, bottles of vodka. It was breakfast. Yes. yes. All day, all day. Yeah. It's always interesting when uh, people like me, I have to get involved in and do my protocol briefings to warn people of things and, yeah, and yeah. Then it still happens, yeah. you know, and it's it's always a very interesting, interesting part just because governments are very different. Um, and, you know, speaking of like vodka for breakfast, uh, what were some of the, like, I, I know that breakfast is, tends to be one of the things that usually surprises visitors. So I'm going to do this both ways. I want our Russian panelists to tell me what was the most unusual breakfast item that you were first introduced to in the United States. And B, I want to start with you and you tell me what was the most unusual uh, breakfast item in Vronish, if you had anything unusual. And if not, just your most unusual food that you tried while you were there. Well, for me, my first breakfast was pretty much the, it was a wake up call. It was like, oh, this is interesting. It was a salad um for breakfast and it had um mayonnaise um and rice i think and maybe some kind of seafood um i don't know what was in it All I but my palate wasn't prepared for that you know uh my and no coffee um I, even though I did put in the chat uh, earlier that I have since converted my Russian friends and they're, you know, they're posting coffee pictures all the time now. But uh, at the time, all they had was, uh, you know, a jar of, of instant coffee, uh, you know, or, or tea. And, uh, and I'm not sure that they had that at, at breakfast. And also um, the, um, the heat and the water maybe were turned off all day. And so you had to, you know, save water for the toilet to flush the toilet later. And, and my, my poor hostess didn't speak any English. So she would call her friend, you know, and her friend would come over to interpret and tell me all these things. But, but definitely that first breakfast of what we would eat maybe later on in the day uh, was probably the most interesting. And there was a lot of aspic. At, at these meals, at these big celebrations, a lot of aspect, which I don't care for. But. Anya, what was, your, what was the first thing you ate in the United States for breakfast that was like, oh, this is a little different for me? Oh, I can say. Well, uh, and they, they, <laughs> I'm 
Well, we'll get to Yulia in just a moment because after you, I'm going to have Josh to answer and then she'll introduce her for for closing up because actually we're at that point where I'm getting the the wrap notice from David anyway. <laughs> so yeah, it's okay. Just you know, typical American breakfast. It was delicious, but I don't remember seriously. It was a long time ago. Sorry. Uh, a lot of sweets. Um, mm -hmm. There are usually a lot of sweet, uh, you know, like toaster strudels or things like that that you just pop in the microwave or the. Uh, it, we we don't you know I mean usually for us uh, breakfast is and my memories and, and Russian food and everything in Baronish has changed a lot I mean you know with a very very modern city very modern everything you know a lot of these things um, are old old time things but um, right now still the food doesn't have as much flavor maybe it is more bland than, than american food which is a lot more spicier and and has a lot of flavors because there are so many influences from different cultures um in russia a lot of things are um the spices are a lot more toned down uh, at least in Voronezh. there are uh regions in russia where it's definitely crazy but in Voronezh, it's it's more bland food so all right thank all of our panelists for tonight. And then I'm gonna have Dasha introduce our final speaker who's gonna wrap everything up and give us our concluding remarks before passing back to David to give uh, just a couple reminders and thank yous. Thank you so much, Alexis. And I feel like this was great. And um, uh, the person who will give us the best final remarks, of course, is uh, my mom, Yulia Baldwin. Uh, you've heard from absolutely everyone on the panel how uh, great and how instrumental she has been in the Charlotte Sister Cities relationship. Um, my mom is an educator at heart. Um, she has been a, a professor at UNC Charlotte and is now an assistant professor um, of Russian at the Defense Language Institute in Monterey. So she's coming to us via Zoom from California. Uh, you can tell that I'm a great educator. Look at Dasha. Uh, but honestly, yes, yes. Somehow I, I raised her well, I think, because she's stepping into my shoes. I've been on the board of directors for Sister Cities for two, two terms uh, from 2000 to 2008, I think. If I if I remember correctly, I may, maybe maybe term is two years, so two and two. 2008, 2000 to 2004. I will, I will tell just a little bit about my experience with breakfast in America just before that, uh, because I remember it very clearly. And uh, Diane Syndrome, hello, I love you. I've not seen you for a long time, but you are the best. And uh, with my late husband, uh, uh, he was a, a member of the breakfast club where I first basically met him in Charlotte. And when I saw that he was taking a piece of bacon, fried bacon, like we didn't have it in Russia, now we do, and was putting jam on top of the bacon, bacon. I thought I will puke, honestly. I said, how can you eat it? Meat with sweet. But now, of course, I, I, I do the same and know how it is done and, and it's delicious. But... <clears throat> What I would like to say, I think you guys, it's great that you're trying to uh, restore the organization and many of you have been already part of Sister Cities. It, it's just a wonderful, uh, as again, I would say, citizen diplomacy tool that, uh, of course, in the time of COVID, maybe only through technology, as Dasha said, maybe to connect schools uh, or students uh, somehow, but... Uh, I think it widens not only the mindset of Russians, it also helps a lot of Americans uh, who don't necessarily travel globally that much, not all of them, but hosting a person from a different cul culture makes you look at your own culture and maybe reevaluate and be more grateful for what you have that others don't. Uh, and of course, uh, there, there's always a, a question of money, uh, where to, to get money uh, for traveling, for arranging groups or exchanges. And I do believe, as I said, that maybe it's a time of a little bit of um, 
cold war is coming, which means there should be a lot of money that government has in grants that, uh, that can be applied for and maybe utilized for some youth programs uh, or uh, for officials uh, to travel. But um, I just think it's, I think it's whatever it will happen, however it will work uh, with Dasha and all of you, I think there still will be some connection, connections established and, and, and some meaningful relations uh, uh, could be organized. So that's it. If you have any questions, I don't have anything else. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I didn't even know how I will connect to Zoom because we are not using at work Zoom. We are using a different program. But I managed to do that. Thank you. Yulia, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. I know it's still your afternoon out in California, but we've just appreciated your words. And I can tell that you, your experience over the years of helping to build this relationship, uh, you have many stories to tell. And perhaps one day we can just have a forum featuring you bringing a lecture of, of some of the experiences and history of the partnership and of the city of Voronish. And we're grateful to your daughter, Dasha, who is right now leading our Voronish committee. I would like to say to our audience that we are reforming that Veronish committee and we're looking for members. So if you're here this evening and you're interested in getting involved, uh, please do email us or go to our website, express your interest and we'll put you in touch with Dasha and with uh, Diane St. John, who is our vice president for uh, global affiliations. I would also like to thank uh, B along with Dasha and Tanya for serving as our panelists this evening to Alexis who stepped up once again as our moderator, Alexis and her role at the city help to keep the flame of sister cities going for about 12 years uh, between the end of the former sister cities committee and the beginning of the current sister cities committee so we're grateful alexis to alina nikita diane and janelle who served as introducers to congresswoman myrick uh, for serving as our opener and of course behind the scenes you do not see her but jesse Herman, who is uh, helping to oversee uh, this evening's webinar. Thanks to the World Affairs Council of Charlotte for loaning us their webinar platform. We're full of appreciation. Again, we're a 100% volunteer association. We welcome your involvement. I would also like to plant a seed, two seeds. First, on Saturday, June 26, is the 30th anniversary of when then Mayor Myrick signed the proclamation that created this sister city partnership. So I hope we can celebrate on that day. Also, our next forum will feature Vakwa uh, Poland, which will be on Wednesday, uh, April 21st, seven o'clock, once again on webinar. I would like to share two slides. In a moment, I'll share once again, our community partners. But first, uh, since this was almost an entire uh, women event uh, with our panel and our introducers, and we just celebrated International Women's Day, I'd like to share our official video that was featured on Monday evening. Charlotte Sister Cities is happy to be a sponsor of International House of Charlotte's annual celebration of International Women's Day. Feliz Día Internacional de la Mujer. Здравствуйте! Поздравляем всех с 8 марта! Всего наилепшего с окази Международного дня кобит! Mamo wovia se fanenya na kumase mai se mamo afishia pa nyame kama hu mwene suwa di hu bia rade nyamo kese mfa mamo mabai. Thank you very much to all of our supporters. I will now share one last screen, and this uh, will once again recognize our community partners. Uh, we're grateful for their support as we reform. And finally, I'd like to invite everyone to visit our website and get involved. Uh, we look forward uh, to continued programs and eventually uh, beginning to run programs in person. But thank you to everyone for support this evening and to all attendees. Have a wonderful night.